current practice in, in, in molecular testing in lung cancer is, is still very much focused on EGFR mutation testing and ALK gene rearrangement um, testing. Um, there, there will, for, for many um, countries, if not right now, very soon be a need for testing for uh, ROS1 uh, gene rearrangement. But there are many more tests on the horizon. And one of the great challenges is to try to deliver uh, this increasingly complex list of different uh, genomic alterations and tests from a very small uh, tissue sample, which is often the reality of what we have to work with. So we're looking often for what we would regard as multiplex techniques that can give uh, multiple genomic uh, alteration data um, from the same test at the same time. And one of the most obvious ways of doing this is to use uh, m what's called massively parallel sequencing, in other words, next generation sequencing technology. Um, in reality, however, for many labs, if you're only thinking about doing EGFR mutation testing and an ALK rearrangement test, it's not cost effective to, to run a next generation sequencing test for those two uh, biomarkers. So many labs still rely on standalone tests. It's been calculated that when we reach a tipping point of approximately five biomarker tests, five standalone tests will be about the equivalent of the ever uh, increasingly cheap next generation sequencing um, panel um, that uh, is, is out there currently commercially, unless of course you're going to develop your own in your own lab, but that's quite a consideration to validate it all. So I, I think a time will come soon for um, routine laboratories to run with next generation sequencing. There are many labs throughout the world already using next generation sequencing, but it's more of a, a kind of research effort uh, rather than uh, being considered a, 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 stand, a, a, a routine uh, diagnostic approach. Well, one thing that is worth saying, however, is that next generation sequencing is very good for mutations. It, it's not quite so good for fusion genes at the moment, but things are improving. Um, and it's, it's a lot less good at uh, managing uh, gene copy number. So we still have to fall back on other techniques. And in addition, uh, an increasing number of biomarkers that we're interested in uh, are now assessed, uh, if not in screening, um, they are assessed entirely by immunohistochemistry. So a next generation sequencing can't do that for you. So. Um, NGS will provide us with uh, lots of information, sometimes too much information, but it's not going to solve all of our biomarker dilemmas.